Hello, my name is Jane Davis. I'm a nurse practitioner in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm here with four patients from one of our dialysis units uh, to discuss what they like and don't like about having a catheter or having a permanent access. Hi, yes, my name is Willie Davis. I've been on dialysis on and off 31 years. Uh, with the catheter, my biggest issue with the catheter is it's easier to get infected. Um, with the permanent access, I'm me personally, I don't see a, a con against it. It's very good. Never had any problems. I've never experience um, infections or nothing like that. But with a perm calf, it's more get infected. The the pros with the perm calf is not getting stuck. So, but otherwise that, I don't have any problems with it. Hi, my name is uh, Kimberly Davis, and I've been on dialysis uh, four years. Um, I had a perm cap three times. Uh, the experience with the perm cap to me was uncomfortable, and I think it was the stitches. Never had an infection uh, versus the graft. I don't like being stuck. So I, the, with, the, with the perm cap, you don't have to be stuck, so there's not a discomfort other than the stitches. But the graph uh, been okay just other than being stuck. Hello, my name is Yvette Calloway and I um, have treatment at Magic City in Birmingham, Alabama. I have been on dialysis um, about 14 years. Um, I was able to come off when I first um, got on because my kidneys start back functioning um, due to some personal things. I ended up back on dialysis. Um, I never had a perm calf until after I had been on dialysis for about 10 years. So that was my first time experiencing that. And my problem with it is painful. <laughs> Is um it pokes out your chest. Um, I would rather be stuck than have a perm calf. I never had any type of infections or anything like that, but had to get the um perm calf because of the fact I was having so many issues with them trying to correct my um graph. But other than that, that's the only problem that I had with the perm calf um hope and pray that i never have to have it again thank you my name is raymond styles i've been a patient here at devita magic city for um five years um Like yeah, but we're going on six. Okay. Yeah, it's going on six. Um, but have you just been on dialysis six years? Yes. God, it seems like longer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I have a fistula compared to the catheter. And um, my my pros and cons from that, um, it usually itch when you have it in your chest, and it it be ear to get irritated because you keep bumping it against your clothes and stuff like that. It's hard to take a shower because you got to cover it up and make sure you maintain it being clean compared to having the fistula. I just, you know, I get stuck. It, it, it hurts some, but I'd rather have that than the cow, you know, because it's more convenient for me.
and it's the less chance of getting infected. The care is better um, as far as that. And that's what I like about the fish. So do any of y'all use the uh, numbing cream before you get stuck? I do. No, I don't. You know it's available to you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Did you get an access before you started dialysis? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you feel about your provider? I know um, you saw, most of you saw nurse practitioners um, or um, nephrologists or both. How did you feel about them telling you you needed to get an access when you didn't need dialysis at the moment? Were you resistant to it? Well, I wasn't because Dr. Brown had informed me that um, they had been watching my um, count. And when it got down to a certain number, she um, said that she wanted me to go ahead and get uh, my assets done. So with me, they did mine and it worked fine. But the thing was, my things were um, deep. So they had to go in and do a super fiscalization on me to lift my vein up. And so um, with that, I I think I may, it may have been maybe two or three months before I even started after they put the assets. So I had time for mines to heal where other people have to start with um, a catheter because they don't have time to heal. That was the reason why I had never experienced a catheter before because um, they they didn't do that for me. So is there something that you would want the people, uh, the practitioners, the physicians, is there something that you would want them to know just about the dialysis experience? I thought for me, since I've been here a short, for me, um, you I don't think nobody prepare you for what you're gonna go through. They don't tell everything is through experience unless somebody's been here a little a while tell you, but nobody tell you I mean until it happens to you. So you think that maybe if you had a mentor more or less, you had somebody like a, a buddy, mm-hmm. someone who was on dialysis. Right. Yes. Okay, I think yeah. Yeah. Um I but, think that no, I'm sorry. No, no, you go ahead. I um with me, I don't think that part bothered me so well bad because of the fact um you're not gonna really know how <clears throat> it feels until you go through it. Um, um when I would tell Kim different things like when your blood pressure dropped, this happened, that happened, that happened. Well, that was just how I am because I'm nosy. And I paid attention to a lot of stuff. And um, because sometimes when you try to tell new patients about things, they don't receive what you're saying because of the fact, first of all, they're upset, they're hurt, they're frustrated. Some of them be embarrassed. They be embarrassed about all types of things. Some be embarrassed about Oh, well, I'm going to have these knots on my arm. Well, would you rather have a knot on your arm or be dead? Mm -hmm. So with me, um, I like that I experienced the things on my own. So therefore that I could tell somebody, well, hey, this this is how this is going to feel when you have this. And yes, some things would have been better if someone had told us because... Some of the stuff that we experience when you go to the clinic and different things, it's not always how it happens here. Um, you know, me personally, when I first found out that I had to um, get on dialysis, I, you know, I just thought it was the end of the world. You know, that everything was going, just going, I w- wasn't nothing going to be right. But then I had to learn through experience that. I could still do everything that I wanted to do. Um, I just had to do it in a different way. And up until six years ago, I was doing everything that I wanted to do until I got nerve damage. 
in my legs and it caused me to where I can't move like I used to move. But long as I got somebody to move with me, I'm fine. I think my experience was different from her. I came from PD. And coming from PD to here was, was totally different. Because you're at home, you're kind of doing everything on your own. But when I came here, I had no, I, th I think um, I sat in a corner by myself where nobody talked to me. So I didn't have anybody to say, you know what, if your blood pressure get here, you're going to, that experience, I, I thought I was dying. And so nobody told me if your blood, you know, watch your blood pressure. Because if it dropped, you know, let us know, whatever. But that, I, I just think it should be something. It may not be everything. But it should be something when you first come. Because I came in this room when we were doing PD training way before I got on dialysis. I had the PD cap in my stomach five years. Yes, that's what Dr. Uh, Alon said. <laughs> He'd never seen that. Because they put it in thinking that I was going to use it immediately. It was five years later. So I had been here did the little training because I chose to do PD Cause I I'm the one that look up stuff and I saw them needles and stuff I'm like no no <laughs> so but I just think it should be something it even though you may experience something different more than what this paper is saying but it should be something to get you know to show you hey uh, different little things so that's well, just me like for me I started at 21 mm -hmm. yeah, and when I first started at 21 I was like. Old folks get on dials. That's what I think. Yeah, and so when I when I come in the room, I'm like, ah, uh, mm -mm. I don't want to do this. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. But it would be good to have someone to actually tell you, okay. It's 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 not as bad as you think it is, mm -hmm. because my first thought was I can't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. I can't do what I used to do. I then the diet. It's like, well, I can't eat what I want to eat. So. Three days a week. <laughs> yeah, and then I got to be somewhere three days a week. Oh, God. So, you know, but it, it would be, I think it would be good to have somebody to talk to mm -hmm. besides a nurse or a nurse practitioner or a doctor because they never sat there. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, well, it, it, it's some things that you can tell people, mm -hmm. which is going to be different for mm -hmm. everybody. That's exactly. for, for everybody but oh, you can scary. have them the least to understand okay wait a minute well it may not work exactly how it worked for me right. mm -hmm. but this is what I can look for mm -hmm. just little simple things like right. she was saying about your blood pressure drop I, most people if you pay attention if you notice they start yawning mm -hmm. constantly yeah, or you get hot. Yeah, or you, or you get hot. But see, if you knew, you don't know that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you ain't even paying attention to it. <laughs> right. Especially by the yawning part, you be like, well, I'm just no, yawning. I'm tired. Yeah, but it's, you know, that means your blood pressure dropping. Like right. she said, you're getting hot. All of a sudden, you're freezing. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you're getting hot. Right. Yeah. Your blood pressure dropping. But so I had the experience that nobody told me. Yeah, so it's 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 different things right. as, like you said, a mentor. Not even a mentor, mm -hmm. just people in different clinics that have been there for a long time. Like, I tell Callaway, just like she was sitting there talking to you, mm -hmm. because she's been here so long. Right. You know, so she has some idea of what's going on. Yeah. Well, right. I haven't been here as long as y'all have, but there was a young man, uh, he was about 29, and he had, uh, his his sister knew I was on it. She called me. I could only tell him what I experienced, because he was nervous. He needed a pancreas and a kidney. Yeah. But he, did, he passed the a couple of months ago, but he 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 told her later he felt better. Yeah. Okay, let's my <clears throat> my oh, experience is, is different from theirs because I've been sitting by one my whole time <laughs> here, and he's more experienced in what was happening. He told me the things that was going to to expect. Um, you know, um, far as being sick at night and throwing up and mm -hmm. using the bathroom on yourself and stuff like that and um it gonna affect you sexually because I'm a male you know and um things I wasn't really prepared for I was prepared for because he had told me so you had a buddy yes it wasn't a formal system but um 
for clarification, these two uh, young men sit next to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, now, let me ask uh, another question. Did any of you come to any of the classes before you started dialysis, any of the patient education mm-hmm. classes? No. No, no nothing was never offered oh, to yeah, me when I was out of class. No. But when I um, did get on, um, I attended classes with Jane Davis um, at Cooper Green talking to um, patients who were fearful about um, getting on dialysis. And even at my church, um, I had to end up talking to um, two of the ladies about uh, getting on dialysis. And one of them, she worked in the medical field, but she was still fearful about being on um, dialysis. And I feel like anything that you step into and you know nothing about, you're going to be fearful. I don't care what it is. I don't care, you know, because how I experience something, Kim or one or a spouse may not experience, and I may not have experienced anything that they have felt because being males, they experience things from, you know, little Willie. I don't have a little Willie, so I can't say how that felt. I never had a sex problem. Um, but I had other things that were going on with dialysis, um, that made, you know, things a little difficult. But, um, when I got ready to get off of dialysis, when my kidneys started back functioning, I was only running two hours, two hours. I came in and I was gone. And, um, like I said, with other things that were going on, personal things, that had went on uh, caused me to get back on, but I think it is good that, um, well, would be good if they did have people to talk um, to the patients before they start or when they start to let them know um, you're you're not alone, that we're all in this together. And a lot of people, um, they push you away. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to say anything, mm, yeah. but. If you start talking and listening to what people can say, you'll feel better. You can't sit here no three or four hours and don't say anything to anybody and think it's not messing with your mind because it is. It's messing with your mind. So, you know, you got to talk to somebody so that they can encourage you, but also educate you because you may have something that you have told me as a practitioner, but you may forget something that you didn't tell me that I need to know, you know. So I never really experienced anything bad. Uh, only thing I experienced bad on dialysis was when I first um, experienced that about your pressure dropping, and I didn't know. I kept telling, I said, I think I got to pee. I think I'm finna <laughs> die. I said, oh, please don't let me die because, you know, that's the way you yeah. feel. They not giving you that saline is... You know, and what it is, you being got so uptight that you got to calm down. You got to learn how to just calm down. But I have been on dialysis, you know, for a while. And so I know the difference of how my body feel when this is finna happen or that finna happen. And I'll be like, hey, 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 come over here. Um, my pressure dropping or this is happening or that. And even if your pressure just dropped, Say from 150 over something to 130, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the difference. Even though it may not seem like a, a big drop, your body will tell you. Um, <coughs> you know, and I, I'm i on dialysis. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but um, I'm on dialysis because of um, diabetes and high blood pressure. And so a lot of times I try to encourage people you know, I don't care what, what I look like, what, what I'm doing, I still can tell you something. Yeah. Because I wish in, in my younger days that I had somebody Sorry. that would have said, Yvette, maintain your diabetes right. Yvette, take your blood pressure pills right. But I didn't. 
And at that age, you know, I was like, I ain't gonna take no blood pressure pills. I'm finna go out here and do this, that, and the other. Cause you felt invincible at that age. At that age, you feel that. So when somebody comes in that's young, you have <coughs> to try to encourage them because in their mind, they're thinking, I'm only this age, I'm only that age. Why is this happening to me? Cause some of them won't receive you. But well, it you, you but you, you got some, to do it. but you got some that's grown that don't want to receive. receive. Yeah. 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 You got yeah. some that's grown that do not want to receive I, anything that um, you say. When you talking about the training, the yeah. only thing I had was uh, Doctor Alon sent me to CKD clinic, mm -hmm. and so at the CKD clinic, that's when I started learning stuff because they do prepare you. They tell you what's not to eat. What you should be doing, start now. I know they were telling me, start now giving up the, the dark soda. Yeah. Start now doing this, start now doing that. So we pretty much did that. But um, one thing Lisa Ferris told me, is, and I use it today, she said, when, today when you leave here, always be your own advocate. You got to be able to speak, speak for yourself mm -hmm. because nobody else will speak for you, speak up. So when I came here, when you know, ask questions. And I know sometimes people seem like they mad if you ask questions, but I'm gonna yeah. ask them. I don't care. Well, I think it, you and know, I, ask questions. My my situation is different because I started out um, as a diabetic. I was real bad diabetic. When I first found out I was diabetic, my blood sugar was nine hundred <clears throat> and oh. something. <laughs> Ooh, that hurts. It was so high that um, they had to rush me to the hospital and they had to use the machine in the hospital to read it. And um, I done been in keto isodosis. They um, gave me seven days to live. I lived three days into the seven days before I turned around. Um, and uh, I had, um, I was on what made me, my blood pressure was high and I was taking medicine. I didn't know that I didn't post to have statins. I was going to Cooper Green and I had a doctor really wasn't watching me. Mm -hmm. So what happened was I ended up going, um, they had me taking a blood pressure pill would help, de help dehydrate me. And when I got admitted in, I, I I was taking so much medicine till I had almost went blind. And so I ended up going to UAB and they took me off all the medicine. They made me stay in there for a couple of days to get it out of my system. Um. Anyway, I was dehydrated. And when they brought me back around, my kidney function was at 40%. And um, it went down about 20%. And then they put me on dialysis. I really appreciate you sharing. You've given me a lot of insight. And you've given me some really good ideas. And I think what you're right. Patients talk to patients. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology. All rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified health care provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.